So welcome to Hare Krishna Valley. Good to see you all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. A few days ago, uh, maybe Thursday, Friday, uh, Wednesday, we thought there was only a few people coming uh, on our ticket sales on Eventbrite. It was only about 30 people. Uh, as we close today, uh, the ticket sales have gone right up. So uh, obviously a lot more people decided to come. If you didn't get a ticket today, then you can see me after. Uh, if you want to pay cash or card, you can, you can do that also. Uh, so we weren't expecting so many people, but then suddenly a lot of people decided to come. So now we're happy because uh, it's Easter. Uh, we like to have a big crowd. Uh, so invite all your friends, send a WhatsApp message now, tell them all to come. Uh, Hare Krishna Valley uh, to celebrate Easter with us. But our Easter is a little bit different uh, to the traditional Easter. Actually, Easter is not a part of our tradition because we are part of the Hindu tradition. And uh, uh, Easter is part of the Christian uh, tradition like that. However, we honor all the great teachers in the world. Uh, Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus Christ. Uh, all, of the great, all of the great teachers, we honor them. So even though today is not our... Actually, we have a children's room in the back also. So if the kids are making too much noise, uh, we also have a playroom in the back. They can also go there and they can play. Like that. Just so they, if they're getting unsettled. Because like we have to be a little bit quiet today. So we can all listen. Is that okay? Okay. So, uh, for Easter, even though it's not part of our tradition technically, but we honor Lord Jesus. Uh, why? Because he is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Hands up if you believe in something higher than us. Some people say God, some people say uh, the universe. You believe in something higher? Most people do. Most, most people believe. Something more than this. Uh, we would argue there has to be something more than this. If this is all there is, it's not that good. <laughs> Hands up if you're perfectly happy. Okay, I've got one lady in the back, two of the kids in the middle. <laughs> the lady and the kids can get together afterwards to have dessert together. <laughs> and talk about your perfect existence. But for everyone else, the other 95% of the room, uh, they're not perfectly happy. Uh, but actually, the nature of the soul is to be perfectly happy. Mm -hmm. It says in the ancient teachings of India, Ananda Mayo Bhyasa. The nature of the soul is to experience Ananda. Ananda means bliss. That is the nature of the soul. The soul, spirit, is made of sat chit ananda, vigraha. Uh, sat means it is eternal. Uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Natvevaham jatu nasam natvam neme janadhipa. He says, never was there a time when we did not exist. We've always existed. That is eternality. That is the nature of spirit. And we always will exist. That is the nature of spirit. So we are eternal. Uh, we are chit. Chit means conscious. Hands up if you are conscious. That means you're alive. <laughs> Consciousness is the nature of life. It is the symptom of life. Right? Is the iPhone conscious? Half and half. <laughs> yeah, it is. What's that? Siri is conscious. Siri is conscious. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> half and half. Not 100%. Yeah, because, yeah, it's kind of, it's weird. Now we're in Kali Yuga, so now we have these strange things, devices, which are half alive. <laughs> Not really. Actually, it's dead. There's no life in it, but it appears to be alive. But the nature of the soul is to be alive. That is called chit. Chit is conscious. Uh, that is the nature of the soul. He's eternal, he's full of consciousness. And then, what sort of consciousness should this soul experience? Uh, that is called ananda. Ananda means bliss. Uh, if you are happy, that is not enough. Because the word for happiness in Sanskrit is sukha. Suk. Uh, you know anyone called suk? Huh? Is there someone in this room called suk? No. no, but you know someone called Suk? Yes. Yes, okay. So Suk, but what is the problem with Suk? 
It is one side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is Dug. Dug means? Misery. Suffering. Unhappiness. So in this material world, uh, Krishna says in Gita, Matra Spashas to Kunteya Shitoshna Sukadukada. Just like in this material world, you have summer and winter. Okay. Try and stop it. What? Try and stop it. You can't stop it. Winter is coming. <laughs> Try and stop it. None of us can stop it. It will come. And then we're cold and everyone's miserable. Okay. And then summer will come again. And then everyone will be warm and relaxed and happy. Just like here at Hare Krishna Valley in the temple room right now. <laughs> and you are warm, relaxed and happy, I hope. And maybe too warm. <laughs> not, not relaxed and a little disturbed. We don't know anyway. But this is the nature of this world. If there is happiness, it means distress will come. And if distress is there, it means happiness will come. So what does Krishna say? Tam tatikshashwa bharata. Tatiksha means? Tolerate. Tolerate. Because happiness will come. Tolerate it. Don't get carried away with it. Distress will come. Tolerate that because that will pass. Everything passes in time. So don't get so disturbed. Uh, that's not the uh, symptom of self-realization. But we're not worried about sukh. We want ananda. Ananda means the bliss of the soul. Uh, so that is what we're looking for in this in this Krishna consciousness material. Now, in this material world, you cannot find ananda. Why? Because the material world is achit. That is near ananda. And it is asat. Asat means it is temporary. Achit means it is does not have consciousness. And nirananda means it is not full of bliss. So we are looking for happiness in the wrong place. Just like the fish. Huh? If you take the fish out of water, is it happy? No. But what if you put the fish on the banana lounge? No. <laughs> what if you give the fish Coca-Cola? No. What if you give the fish... Uh, French fries. No. What if you give the fish a ghetto blaster? No. What if you give the fish a Rolex wash and some Reeboks? No. Allez, baba. Uh, the fish will not be happy until he's back in the water. Yes. Okay, okay. When the fish is in the water, he is happy. Yeah, when he's out of the water, it doesn't matter what you give him. Give him one million dollars. He's going to be dead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he will die. He will die. How can he be happy? How can he? So we are the soul. We are Atma. But now we're in the material world. So how can we be happy? You can't. You can get some happiness, but it will pass. Uh, but everyone is foolish in this world. Uh, they're full of Ajnana. Ajnana means ignorance. Uh, they're ignorant of their real self and they're trying to find happiness in the material world, in temporary things. Yeah. People think, oh, I will go here, I will go there, I'll experience this, I'll drink this, I will snort this, I will take this, I'll be happy. No, it doesn't work like that. The nature of the material world is it is, it is full of suffering. Uh, so, certain people, they come to teach us who we actually are and to take us back to Krishna, to take us back to God, to help us become enlightened. One of these people, his name was Lord Jesus Christ. He appeared 2,000 years ago. And Prabhupada, who is the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, his picture is on the seat of honor. Srila okay. Prabhupada said, Jesus is our guru. Why is our guru? Because he teaches the same thing. Whatever we are teaching, he te teaches the same thing. Two things that Jesus taught, if you summarize all of his teachings. Love thy Lord with all thy heart. Same, that's what the Hare Krishnas do. We, we worship Krishna with bhakti, with devotion, with love. So it is the same thing. And treat your neighbor as you would have them treat yourself. Uh, be nice to people. Hands up if you like being nice to people. Hands up if you like being nice to dogs. <laughs> everyone. How like you like being nice to everyone? Right. Hands up if you're always nice to everyone. Okay, less people. <laughs> Why? Because we are not perfect. Yeah. Uh, everyone just move forward a little bit. There's more people coming. Just move forward, move forward. We have plenty of room. Everyone, yeah, come, come a little. 
just make room for more people in my company. Uh, it is like the Calcutta train station. <laughs> we can fit so many people. What is the problem? This is India. India, we can fit so many people. No problem. You have enough room? Yes. Okay. You happy? You comfortable? Yes. If anyone needs chairs, we have chairs in the next room. You can take chairs. Yeah. Just go next room, you grab a chair, and you can sit. You okay? Yeah, sure. So, uh, Lord Jesus came to teach us. He's our guru. He came to teach us. Do not be materialistic. He is the most famous person in history, modern history. Huh? He's so famous. Uh, what year is it now? 2023. 23, very good. <coughs> These kids are very intelligent. 2020, 2023, 2023 years since what? Since Jesus was here on the earth. That's how famous he is. We, we name our whole calendar after him. Such a powerful person. Such a pure person. No one had so much effect on society. Huh? I've heard that very soon they're going to name the, uh, the calendar, change the calendar date uh, to since the birth of Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, I was joking. <laughs> but no one would agree to that. Huh? Even though Michael Jordan did so much for all of us, gave us so much happiness with every slam dunk. <laughs> but... <laughs> Not as significant a contribution as Lord Jesus. But Jesus was not a materialist. He was a spiritualist. Very, very interesting. Michael Jordan, I wouldn't say he's a... Uh, I would not say he's not a materialist. He likes to smoke big cigars. Uh, after, the, uh, after he wins the playoffs. Uh, it's not what Jesus would do. Lord Jesus, if you read in the Bible, he walked through the marketplace. They set up a marketplace inside the church. Okay, a marketplace inside the church, shopping mall inside the church. He came in and he turned all the uh, tables over. He said, what are you doing? You're in my father's home, my father's house, and you're just trying to make money? What is this? He wasn't very happy. And he wasn't very popular back then either. This is something you have to understand. He wasn't incredibly popular. What did they do to him? They crucified him. They tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. Right? He wasn't like a popular person, like everyone was saying, oh, everything you're saying is wonderful. No. He was a, a rebel. And he was saying, no, what you, the way you are acting, this is not spiritual. No? But actually, he did not die. He did not die. Right? There's, there's evidence that he did not die. It says in the Bible that they, when they put him into the tomb, they uh, put aloe, aloe vera, onto the wounds. This is what you put on to heal someone. He wasn't dead. He was a jogi. Very powerful. They, maybe they thought he was dead, but he was not dead. He rose again. Huh? And uh, if you read the Bible, there are 18 years of his life missing. Between the age of 12 and 30, nothing is said about his life. Right? There's nothing in there. It's like 18 years of missing. Why would that be? Why would that be? Maybe he went to India. Maybe he went to India. 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 <laughs> uh, good chance. Very good chance. Because when he was born, uh, the wise men came from the east. east. What is east of Jerusalem? India. Uh, you go across, you hit Afghanistan, Pakistan, and further you go into India. There's a lot of evidence, actually. There are books which have been written which say that he was actually in India. And in Jagannath Puri, you know Jagannath Puri? Yes. You know this? A very famous holy place. I, I like to go there, try to go there once a year. Very powerful. They say there are pictures of him on the walls in the temple, which is 3,000 years old. Uh, a white man called Isha, uh, who came at that time. Uh, very powerful person. So he may have been in India, and then he came back with all this enlightenment, all these spiritual teachings, and he taught the people, but it, it was not popular. They tried to kill him. But then it says there is uh, evidence also to suggest that after he rose again, 
Uh, they say that he left the world in Kashmir, northern India. If you go there, they, they still say the tomb is there of Isha, this uh, pale saint. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, the evidence is not conclusive. But, but the point is, he taught us to be more spiritual. So that is what Easter is for. And we are very happy that you came here to Hare Krishna Valley on Easter. Because uh, you're not being materialistic. Uh, you're coming here and you're having a spiritual experience. And Jesus would be very happy with all of you. Uh, so happy that we might even give you an Easter egg. <laughs> because that's what Easter is about. <laughs> the more eggs you get, the happier you will be. Uh, is it? I'll see what I can do for you. I'll say, the Easter Bunny came to my house this morning, so I might have some spares for you, because I, I don't need so many of these things. Okay. So, uh, this is a little synopsis about uh, the purpose. So, Hare Krishna Valley is meant to teach people how to be more spiritual, uh, because this is what is lacking in society. People are not happy in general. Uh, society, society has become chaotic. Right? They have lost the plot. Huh? Do you know where the plot is? Yes. Huh? We, we can show you where the plot is. <laughs> right? What people have forgotten. One time Swami Prabhupada, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, whose pic uh, picture is there on the seat of honor, he came to London. And when he arrived in London at the airport, the reporters came. And they said, Swamiji, why have you come to our country? Uh, why have you come from India to England? He said, I have come to teach you that which you have forgotten. Because everyone has forgotten who they actually are, their spiritual essence. So he came to create a revolution to teach us who we actually are. Jivara Srupa Hoy, Krishnara Nichadas, Krishnara Tatasta Shakti, Veda Veda Prakash. Who are we? This is an important question. Who are you? Human. Human. That is half correct. Half correct. Currently you're human, means you're in a human form. But if you don't behave properly, in your next life you might become Bronte. <laughs> Did you see our dog outside? Bronte? Huh? You didn't see our dog? Okay, afterwards you, you'll see our dog, Bronte. Uh, she is our mascot. She's very popular here. Huh? When people arrive, sometimes they get out of the car, they see me, they say, where is Bronte? Huh? Not even hello, Keshava. <laughs> they just say, where is Bronte? She's very popular. Huh? So Bronte, huh? but she can't come in here, she can't listen, she can't understand all the philosophy, she can't chant, it's all these things. Because she's not a human. Yeah. So if you don't behave properly as a human, you might become an animal in your next life. Yeah? Samsara chakra. Huh? This is called reincarnation. It can happen. You have to be careful. Just like Nehru. You know Nehru? Who is Nehru? Who is Nehru? Uh, he used to be the Prime Minister of India. Uh, but it is said, one astrologer said in his next life he became a dog in Sweden. <laughs> Nehruji. You know he had the hat? Because when you're the leader of the country, you have to take one sixth of the karma of the whole country. Uh, imagine if you're Bill Clinton. Or, or Donald Trump, or Barack Obama. Imagine taking all one sixth of all of that karma. It's heavy. Uh, you don't know where you'll go, what you'll become. Uh, so you end up being a dog in in Sweden, Nehruji. Why Sweden? Ask the astrologer. I don't know. It's cold there, so maybe it's suffering more. So, so but the point is, you have to be very careful. Now, you might be human now, but who are we? When we say, who are you? You say human. That's partially correct. Okay. But more higher than that is okay. Jivera, Swarup. What is the Swarup of the Jiva? The soul? Krishnera Nichidas. He is a servant of Krishna, servant of God. That is his purpose. When you act like that, you will be happy. You will find Ananda. You will find bliss, even in this world. Uh, just like before, we're chanting Hare Krishna. And we're feeling blissful, feeling happy. Why? Because we're chanting the names of Krishna, of God. No? Abhinitwa nami nami no. There's no difference between the name of Krishna and Krishna. Right? A rose, when you say 
uh, like in India, you have a rose. In India, you say gulab. Mm -hmm. huh? Anyone here from India? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One man out the back. He's from... <laughs> okay, JK. Okay, okay. So, uh, in India, we call the rose gulab. But here, we call it rose. The name is different. But the object smells the same. Hmm? Uh, Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name is still as sweet. Right? So the, the rose, you can change the name. It is different from the object. But Krishna and Krishna's Nam, his name, they are not different. Abhinitva Nama Nama no. No difference. So when you say Krishna, Krishna is there. He's dancing on your tongue. Hare Krishna. When you say Hare, then Radha, his consort, his feminine aspect, she is on your tongue. So whenever we chant Hare Krishna, Radha and Krishna, they're dancing on your tongue. Did you know that? No. Huh? So if you go home and you chant Hare Krishna, yes. right, around your kitchen table, put your hands in the air and dance and chant around your kitchen table and chant Hare Krishna. And Radha and Krishna are on your tongue. Well, they are with you. And then your life becomes spiritual and you become full of ananda, full of bliss. Even in your kitchen you can be blissful. Oh, it's possible. So the, we're teaching these things at Hare Krishna Valley. Right? Jesus would be very happy with what goes on here. Right? Because this is the real church. The church is not sectarian. Uh, it's not sectarian. And the most important thing is the church leader has to be pure. <coughs> That's the most important thing. Because these days people have lost faith in the church leaders. Yeah, it's a big shame because they're the people we should trust the most. But now people, they doubt. We don't know because we hear so many bad things. Right? The leaders of the religions, they're doing so many things which are not pure, which are not spiritual. So it is very important that the leader is pure, that he is spiritual. Then he has potency, shakti. Right? And then uh, you will learn. You will feel purified yourself by that association. So here at Hare Krishna Valley, we're trying to follow in the teachings of Jesus nicely. This is the real purpose of Easter. Uh, to honor the spiritual saints, uh, the gurus like Jesus. Uh, I'll stop here. Does anyone have any questions, any comments about anything we've discussed or about anything about spiritual life you would like to know? Okay, Mataji. What is the purpose of the body that gives ends? So what is the question? If this is the practice of Easter, why is there a body that gives ends? Yeah, so why is there a, if this is the purpose of Easter, then why is there a bunny that gives eggs? Have you ever seen the bunny? Yes. Yeah, so we, we, we hear there's a bunny, but we never saw it. And have, you, have you ever seen a bunny give an egg? Yes. Okay, well, this young boy is very special. <laughs> he travels to planets where there are bunnies who give eggs. In your kindergarten, yeah. the bunny came and he gave an egg. Yeah. So, so it, is, it is symbolic. The egg is symbolic because the egg represents new life. So on Easter we're meant to start something new. We're meant to remember Jesus and we're meant to rededicate ourselves to something new spiritually. So that is the purpose. As for why there is a bunny, does anyone know why there's a bunny? Not you, because your answers are. <laughs> Does anyone know why there's a bunny? No. I don't know why, but it's... Yeah. But uh, there are some chocolate companies yeah. in the world who are making a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there is a bunny that gives eggs. <laughs> so that is, that is more or less the reason why. But here you're learning about the real purpose. Okay. So next time you're having your chocolate egg, you can remember the real purpose. Okay. Because the, the eggs are just part of it. The, the egg is a way of showing goodwill to someone. And we give some chocolate egg, but that's not the, the whole purpose. Just like in Diwali. Uh, is anyone here from India? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, on, on Diwali, you give sweets, isn't it? Everyone gives sweets. But then what's the purpose of the sweets? Everyone forgets the purpose of actual Diwali. Everyone just gives sweets. I think that's like an Easter, everyone just gives eggs. I think that's a bit, uh, there's more to it than that. That's all. Any other question? about the meaning of eggs and the Easter Bunny and... Any other questions? You actually have a question? Yeah. What is it? Why am I the only one that's eating the Bunny and Easter Bunny? 
Why the only one who's seen the Easter Bunny? Because some people in this world are very special, and you are that special person uh, who has seen the Easter Bunny. <laughs> so. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Boy here. I'll take the boy in a minute. Just stop the back. Quick yeah. question. Um, all the gods that I've seen um, on pictures and everywhere are, seem to be quite young and beautiful. Except for Lord Brahma, he's the only god who seems to be really old. <laughs> why have they been like? What's the reason behind it? Like, why is Lord Brahma the only god who is depicted as with a long beard and old? Okay. So first, I'll ask you a question, and then I'll answer your question. I take my question back. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> So first I'll ask you a question. So who are these gods? <laughs> They're all part of Lord Krishna. And then who is Lord Krishna? The origin of everything. The or origin of everything. Okay. What? That's a good answer. That's actually the correct answer. Ishwara, this is a verse from Lord Brahma himself. Brahmaji says in Brahma Samhita. Now Brahma Samhita says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachchidananda Bhikraha Anadya Adya Govinda Savakarana Karanam. Hmm? It says in Brahma Samhita, Brahma says, Who is Krishna? As you said, Ishwara Parama Krishna. Param Ishwara. Param Ishwara means supreme controller. Who is the supreme controller? That is God. Who is God? According to the ancient teaching, that is Krishna. Is the supreme controller because everyone in this world we try to be the controller we all try to control things uh, hands up if you try to control things hands up if you're giving up trying to control things <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's smart if you give up trying to control things that's called intelligence because you can't control you're limited what you control what can we control not right? even ourselves not even ourselves you can't control yourself Wait until you get old. <laughs> when you get old, you'll control yourself. No one can. No one can control themselves, really? Mm -hmm. Only advanced people. Yeah, pure people. Pure people. But you can also become pure. Nothing is stopping you. Uh, only our desire is stopping us. If we want to be pure, we can be pure. That's okay. So, uh, Krishna is the supreme controller. Right? Supreme controller means he controls everything. Right? The movement of the sun, the movement of the planets. You know that the sun and all the planets, they, they move in a perfect symmetry, perfect. We can predict where the sun will be and where all the planets will be 1,000 years from now to the second. That's perfect. There's no human being who can make a watch. I can make a watch. Besides this young boy. <laughs> I, I hadn't finished my statement, but there's no human being who can make a watch except for him, <laughs> that uh, will not lose time over 1,000 years. It hasn't been invented yet. Right? But Krishna has made a watch, like a solar system, which rotates perfectly. We can predict exactly to the moment when everything will work. That's called supreme control. That's Krishna. So who are all the gods, the young gods you're talking about? They are people who help him uh, manage the universe, or manage the, the departments of universe. And you, as you said, why do they look young? Because when you're blessed by Krishna, you stay young. Uh, Chiranjeev. Uh, do you know anyone called Chiranjeev? Yeah. Uh, you know someone? What does it mean, Chiranjeev? Long living. Long living. Yeah, long living. Yeah. Or Navayot. Yeah, I'll get to you, I'll get to you, don't worry. Navayovana. Navayovana means always youthful. Uh, so it's a blessing if you say always youthful. Like Kunti, you know Kunti Devi? In Mahabharata, she was always young. Even when she was Yudhishthira's mother, and Yudhishthira was much, much older, but she always looked young. It's possible. So then, why does Brahmaji look old? Actually, he doesn't. That's the way he's, he's depicted or painted that he looks old, because he's the first person in this universe. So he's been here for millions of years already. So they put a big beard on him, so he looks like that, but actually he's young. He looks young. But just so we understand, because, you know, you know, if you met someone who is 80 or 90 or 100, 
yeah, so like, imagine meeting someone who's 3 million years old or 100 million years. You meet Brahmaji, you would imagine he at least have a beard. <laughs> uh, that's why he's painted like that. Is that okay? Okay. Someone else had a. Where is it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you saying that Jesus is related to Krishna? Am I saying Jesus is related to Krishna? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and also how can we you said Krishna is like the origin of everything? When like Shiva is actually the more like Yeah, that's a good question. So the first question is, is Jesus related to Krishna? And the answer is yes. Why? Because we're all related to Krishna. Because Krishna, if he's God, we're all related to him. So who is Jesus? Why is he special? Because he's a pure son of God. We are all children of God. We are all daughters and sons of God. But we're not pure. But Jesus is pure. He's special. Because he dedicated his whole life to Krishna, to God. So therefore he's considered to be pure. So yes, he's related to Krishna. He is the son of God. And then when we say Krishna is the supreme controller, and you mention Lord Shiva, wouldn't he be the supreme controller? But there are stories in the Bhagavad Purana, uh, in the Krishna book. You can get a copy in our shop, just over here. You can get a copy of the Krishna book, which comes from the Bhagavad Purana, the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it says at one time, many thousands of years ago in the universe, Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna had a big fight, a big battle. All the Devatas and all the Asuras came together, there was a big battle. And Krishna and uh, Shiva directly fought with each other. And then the, the question is who won? Uh, Krishna won. Uh, you can, I can show you the story. I can let you read it for yourself to see. And then also, if you read in the Bhagavad Purana, in Canto, I'm trying to think which Canto it is. Canto 4, I think it is. 4, 5, 6. Is one of the, when, she, when Shiva is meditating? 4? Four? 4. Okay, so in the 4th Canto, Shiva sits under a tree at Kailash. Right? And he sits under a tree and he has Rudraksha. He has the beads and he meditates. Who is he meditating on? Krishna. Krishna. Right? It says that he is meditating on the name of uh, Narayana. 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 So he's meditating on, it. on the Supreme Lord. Someone who is above him. So even Shiva meditates on someone higher. He prays. Uh, so that's why we say Krishna is the Supreme God. Because it is mentioned. There are many stories which explain that. Is that okay? Yep. Would you like to ask anything else? No. Are you convinced? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can see on your face you didn't look very convinced. It's a tough crowd. It's a tough crowd. It's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. Because you know, if you're not convinced, that's your prerogative. That's your, we respect that. We respect your opinion. But then, what we're presenting here is that Krishna is the original form of God. He is the supreme form of God. If you think otherwise, you have to show us evidence to support what you're saying. You have to show us some ancient book, some Vedic literature, which supports what you're saying. If you can show us that, then we will believe you. So I can show you many places and many stories which show that Krishna is supreme, even higher than Shiva. I can show those things. So if you can show me other things, I can, I can believe you. But you have to show it to me first. Is that okay? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Who is Narayan? Who is Narayan? Um, which part of India are you, are you from? Gujarat. Gujarat, okay. So in Gujarat we worship Krishna primarily. You know, he's the main, Nachi and so forth, they're the main uh, forms. Uh, but in South India they worship Lakshmi Narayan, uh, or Vishnu, Mahavishnu and so forth. So Narayan is an expansion of Krishna, and he has four arms. So he is showing the Aishwarya feature of God. He is showing the power of God. Krishna is showing Madhurya Lila, which means the sweetness of God. So God in his original form, you see in the pictures, he is a bluish cowherd boy. Yeah? And he is performing Madhurya Ras, very sweet pastime. He, he looks very sweet, but when someone has four arms, it's very impressive. Uh, which shows the person is very powerful and very competent. So that is Krishna showing that form or that uh, uh, powerful part of his nature. So when he's showing that, he transforms into Narayan, 
and then he shows that pass on that lila. So that is who Narayan is. Is it okay? Convinced or? Yep. Okay, that's good. He is convinced. <laughs> oh, that's he is convinced. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. It's a very good question. If Krishna made this world, then who made Krishna? It has to stop somewhere. It has to stop somewhere. Uh, because God, by definition, uh, in India we say Bhagavan. Uh, Bhaga. Bhaga means full of opulence. Aishwayasya samagrasya viryasya yeshashaha shriyaha jnana vairagya yaschaiva shanambhaga itingana so Bhagavan, Bhaga means opulence, Vana means to possess. So there are six opulences, Shanambhaga Itingana. Uh, Aishwarya, Aishwarya means wealth or power. Virya, Virya means strength, power. Aishwarya, uh, Samaga, uh, Virya, Yasha, Yasha means fame. Uh, Shri means beauty, Gyan means knowledge, Vairagya means detachment or renunciation. So someone who has all of those six qualities unlimitedly, that is Bhagavan or God. So he doesn't get created by anyone, he was just always there. He's just all powerful, that's by definition, that's who he is. So it's beyond our comprehension. Because you know, naturally we think like everyone in this world came from someone, right? We all came. Who did you come from? <coughs> yeah, you come from your own mother, right? And then where did she come from? And then where did she come from? And then we go back, 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 back. And then finally we get to Lord Brahma, who was Swayambhu. He was self-born within this universe. And then if we go back further than him, there is Narayana. If we go back further, there is Krishna. And then it says that is it. That is the complete understanding. It has to finish somewhere. Uh, otherwise, uh, if God has an origin, then he's not God. Whoever creates him is the origin. So. It's a very good question. Any other questions? Um, I wanted to add on to one of the questions. Uh -huh. Like you said that if someone possesses these six things, they are considered as God. I just don't understand how do they possess these powers from science things are created by cells but how do they possess such powers how do they possess such powers yeah because why is it not understanding I don't understand how that someone, you said something about science or something? He's looking at us from a scientific perspective. Yeah. So then how does, because we understand things rationally through science on a material platform, but how do the others have unlimited powers or such powers? Where does that come from? Yeah, I'll need, to, I'll need to still, can you explain that, what you mean by the science part? So by the science part, most of the animals come from cells and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I wonder if it's if it's kind of connected to the cells. Yeah, it is. It is. Because the cell is more complicated, one cell from our body, because our body is made up of many, many, many cells, right? Millions of cells. One cell is more complicated than the car that you drove here in. You drove in a car today. Your parents drove you here in a car. So that car is complicated, right? Can we build a car? Yeah. You have to learn how to build a car. It's complicated. And no one person can build a car. Just like, have you been in an aeroplane before? Yeah. So not one person can build the aeroplane. It's too complicated. There's so many parts and so many vari variable parts of the plane. It takes many people to build it. Many people's intelligence. So one cell in our body is more complicated, more intricate than that whole aeroplane put together. Right? So, who created the cell? That is Krishna. Right? God created the cell because he made something that even a man cannot make. Even a human cannot make a cell. Otherwise, why are humans making cells? 
Just like Prabhupada said, Prabhupada is the founder of the Hare Krishna movement. He said to the pilot, to the engineers who made the planes, he said, make one mosquito. Make a mosquito. A mosquito is more intricate than a plane. Why? Because a plane will only fly when the pilot gets into the plane. But a mosquito just flies by itself. <laughs> right? And it doesn't let off fumes. And it doesn't make as much noise as a, uh, as a plane. Although mosquitoes do make a lot of noise. <laughs> They're a bit annoying, actually. Yeah, very annoying, actually. Uh, Prabhupada actually said, someone asked Prabhupada one time, they said, why were mosquitoes created? And he said, only for one reason, to annoy us. <laughs> because, you know when you're going to sleep sometimes? What's the hottest part of your body? Your ear. Right? Most of the heat comes from the ears. That's why ears get quite red. And mosquito, because they, they sense heat, they, they have a heat sensing device. Doesn't matter where they are in a big dark room, they'll find your ear. Have you ever experienced that? You go to sleep and the mosquito starts going like that. Very annoying. Especially when you're trying to sleep, very annoying. And actually, which animal on this earth kills more people every year than any other animal? No, no, I'm asking. Which animal kills more than any other animal? You can pick any animal. Which one kills more than any? Human beings. Actually, it's the mosquito. It kills more than anyone else. Because when they bite you, quite often they carry disease. They give you malaria. Uh, or they give you some other, what's the other one? <laughs> Dengue fever, like that. Ross River. And the list goes on. <laughs> they so many disease. Actually, so they, they're meant to annoy us and complicate. So, even a mosquito, that must have been created by someone. Because no man can create a mosquito. They can't make something that does that. Uh, so someone must have created that. must be a supreme power who created the cell. Well, they, where does that come from? That's Krishna. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Think about it. And then, you know, maybe you will believe it or not believe it. That's up to you. But it makes sense. It has to be created by someone. Everything's created by someone. Your, your, your car didn't just appear. Right? It just, or an airplane doesn't just appear, someone had to make it. So our cell could not just appear, someone had to make it. Huh? So if we say Krishna made that, God made that. That's our explanation. Yeah, good question. Oh my God, what is the question? What's one plus one? What's one plus one? Is that the question? Yes. I'm not so educated. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, madam. When Krishna died, didn't he like want to die? Why? The person who killed him? He was too old. He, he did it by accident. Do you know the story of when he, Krishna departed? He was too old. Man. What's that? Uh, he was too old. He saw it in the foot. What's that? He got shot in the foot. He got shot in the foot, yeah, by a hunter's arrow. Yeah, so some people do not believe that Krishna is God. Some people, they do not believe in God. There are people like that. They don't believe in God. That's okay. People can choose whatever they want to choose. But some people do not believe in God. So Krishna, uh, Krishna is very powerful. If you read his pastimes when he was here on earth, he fought with many very powerful asuras, very, very powerful... Uh, Demons. 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 Yeah, de we, we say demons. I don't like the word demon. I'm trying to Rakshas. think of it. Demons. Yeah, Rakshasa, but then English people don't know what a Rakshasa is. <laughs> monsters. Demons. Monsters. Monsters, yeah, monsters. Like very powerful monsters. Yeah, he, he fought with many, he killed so many. Bakasura, Pranambasura, Arishtasura, so many he killed. You know, Shishapal, so many he killed. Very powerful. So then, at the end of his time on earth, Krishna doesn't die. None of us die. So Krishna did not die. But he disappeared from our vision on this what? earth. So after 125 years of being here on the earth, there was a battle at... Uh, 
just down from Dwarka, uh, Prabhas Chetra. Prabhas. You can go to that place now, it's still there. So Prabhas Chetra, the Yadu dynasty fought with each other and they all destroyed each other. At the end of that huge war, Krishna went and sat down under a banyan tree, a, a tree, and he began to meditate. And Uddhava came and sat with him, and Maitreya Rishi. This is all mentioned in the Bhagavatam. So they sat with him, and then he spoke the Uddhava Gita to them. His final message to humanity before he left. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita when he was here, and then at the end he spoke the Uddhava Gita, which is in the books just behind you. So then, after speaking that, a hunter came and looked between the bushes and he saw something pink which was the bottom of Krishna's foot. He thought it was a deer. He shot an arrow and it said the arrow entered Krishna's foot and then he died from the arrow wound. Now, the first thing we have to understand, the hunter would not have been, after a battlefield, the deers aren't going to hang around. Deers are very timid animals. Why would a deer be in the forest straight after a battle? Right? There wouldn't be any deers there. So that it was just Krishna needed the way to show everyone who does not believe that he is God that he was going to leave the world now. No, he's dead. Huh? So then he showed that a hunter shot him in the foot. I mean, he's Krishna. He just survived so many battles. And then one hunter's arrow shot in his foot made him die. It, it does, it's not logical. It makes no sense. So then uh, the reason that he showed that was then he left a body like we leave a body when we die, our soul goes, we're not the body. But he left a body like us, just so people who think he's not God, they'll say, oh look, he's just like us. He died like an ordinary person. So it's just something he did just for people who don't believe in him. But for those of us who do believe in him, we understand he's eternal. And his spiritual form went to his next destination. Is that okay? Yeah, good question. Good. Any other questions? What is religion? What is religion? Okay. Yeah, you have to calm down a little bit. You're getting a little bit too noisy mm -hmm. and a little bit too distracting. So you have to just calm down. We, in this place, we, we practice something called Shanti. You know what Shanti means? Yes. What does it mean? It means calm down. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so if you can practice Shanti, we'd be very happy. Is that okay? Okay. We're not long now. Not long now. Well, we have a playground. We have trampoline. If you like to play on the trampoline, you can also play. Otherwise, Shanti, Shanti. Okay, calm down. Okay, so what is religion? Okay, so the word uh, religion, in it's an English word. It's actually a Latin word. It's too distracting. Maybe, who, who's these parents? Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, just, yeah, a little bit, a little bit too much. Okay. Otherwise, you can go to the back, sit at the back. That's okay. You can sit at the back there. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to be calmed down a little bit. Lunch. Okay. Lunch? <laughs> So, uh, the word religio, that is Latin, and it means relink or reconnect. So, the word religion means to reconnect. Now, that's uh, what it means in English or in uh, Latin. Uh, in Sanskrit, the word means dharma. Uh, dharma means uh, the essence of something, right? That is a dharma. So, just like fire. What is the dharma of the fire? Right, it is heat and light. Yes. How do we know something is fire? Because there is heat, there is light. Then we say, oh, there is fire. That is the essence of it, the nature of it. So dharma means the essence of something. Huh? So uh, uh, religion or dharma means what is the essence of the soul? So the essence of the soul is to serve Krishna. Jivera Srupahoi. Krishna and Nichadas to serve Krishna. So that is the definition of religion. When you're serving God, you're serving Krishna, then you're being religious. You're reconnecting, relinking, religio. Uh, if you don't serve Krishna, then you're being irreligious. You're not serving, you're disconnected. And when you're disconnected from Krishna, you'll become unhappy. When you're connected to him, you'll be happy. I have to take some other questions. You have to calm down a little bit. Okay, I'm taking some other questions. First. Someone else put their hand over here or something? You would? No. Yeah. As far as I understand, we're all individual souls and spirits. My question is, why 
for example, I have some of my mother and my father's behaviour, but we're supposed to be all separate souls. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Because at this point in time, we are the soul. But the soul has entered into a material body. So we're in a particular body at this point in time. So the body uh, has a particular psychophysical makeup, our body and our mind. So because our karma was to come from particular parents, which may have been good or bad according to what your parents are like, you may love your parents or you may not love your parents, because it's, it's a mixed bag. Uh, Forrest Gump, the great guru, once said, life is like a box of chocolates. chocolates. Okay. So it means you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes your parents are positive, sometimes they're negative. So because it is our karma to take birth from particular parents, we will have a particular nature similar to them. That's why it'll, it'll see, uh, we'll see that we have a psychophysical nature which is very similar to them. Yeah. But our soul is separate from that. While we're relating to this body and mind, then we act like in a particular way, but actually we're separate from that. Good question. Yes, sir. What is Mukti? <coughs> How do we know if we are on path of Mukti? Yeah. I think, can everyone just please be a little quiet at the moment? Just because I'm trying to, it's hard to concentrate when people are talking about it. So, so what is Mukti? <coughs> uh, the word Mukti means liberation. So we're trapped in this world, and while we're in this world, we're feeling uh, bound by the, the laws of this world. Liberation means to escape from those laws, right? to escape from that. So if you can do that, then you achieve mukti. Uh, but what we aim for in our teachings is not mukti, it is bhakti. Uh, bhakti is higher than mukti. So we want to serve God, we want to be devoted to God, to Krishna. And when you do that, uh, when you have that bhakti, automatically you get mukti, you get liberated <coughs> from this world. You go back to the other world, the spiritual world. So mukti is automatic in the path of bhakti. Yeah. And how do we know if we are on that path? Of bhakti? If you're practicing, if you have a guru, and you're practicing under the guru, then you're on the path of bhakti. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. What was your journey like? I'm assuming that you were not always just devoted to Krishna. Yeah. What, what was the thing that you know, wanted you to kind of get in that route. And what was your journey like in India too? Because I've, I've heard quite a lot of, you know, what it is like to be a devotee back there. But I've only seen videos and some really nice things on the grammar showing me on WhatsApp. But hmm. what, what really got you? Because I'm, I'm curious about your conscious brain. What, what attracted you to that? Yeah, so I was born in Melbourne. And I grew up in Eltham, <coughs> which is the northern part of Melbourne. Very nice place to live. Yeah, my childhood was nice. I had a nice childhood and you know, nice experience. Um, and I was a, uh, I was accepted into a, a tennis academy when I was young. I was a tennis player, and I was training to become a, uh, you know, develop a tennis career. I was winning tournaments and different things like that. And then when I was about 15, uh, one of my brothers passed away suddenly uh, in an accident. I was the oldest and he was the third uh, younger. He was only nine years old and suddenly passed away. So at that time, I felt like I had a spirit <coughs> spiritual awakening. So I felt like uh, I was then, uh, it was like an awakening from a previous lifetime. And I felt like I needed to find the answers to the meaning of life. So then I began to read many things, Buddhism and Baha'i and different, different things. And then by the time I was 18, then I received the Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is our main uh, text, so for the Hindu people, that's something. And then when I read the Bhagavad Gita, which was uh, from Swami Prabhupada, his version, which is the most widely read version in the world, which he calls Bhagavad Gita as it is. Now, there are many, there's 600 versions of Bhagavad Gita in the world, but his version is by far the most popular. Bhagavad Gita as it is, it means nothing is changed from the original message. So many, there are so many interpretations, even of the Bible. 
You know, there's King, King James Version, then there's the Mormon Version, so many versions. Jehovah's Witnesses have a version, uh, Seven Day Adventist, everyone has a version. So the Bhagavad Gita also is like that, so many interpretations, but this, this version is not interpreted, it's just given purely. So I read that, and then when I read that I felt like I was becoming enlightened. And then at the age of 19 I went to the ashram in Melbourne in Elba Park, and I became a brahmachari. And for eight years I lived in the ashram and I practiced sadhana, full-time spiritual life. And then at the age of about 27, then I got married, and then I started managing ashrams around Australia and Adelaide, and now I manage this one here. And uh, then I go to India, try to go to India once a year on a pilgrimage to go to Brindavan and Mayapur and Puri, these sacred places, and fully absorb ourselves in spiritual life. Because the nature of this world is, the main reason I, I took to this spiritual path is because the nature of this world is it is full of suffering. Uh, and we need to get an answer for the suffering. And, you know, everyone's trying to give us an answer. You know, how to reduce the suffering. Like Donald Trump, he gives us an answer. You know, just make more money and you'll be happy. And does he look happy? Yeah, he might be going to jail for all we know. We don't know. So, you know, people try, and then everyone you speak to, they will give you a different version of how to become happy. So you have to choose who you want to listen to. Like I was saying just before, you need a guru. You need people who can teach you. So, you know, when I started practicing the, the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, then I realized then I can get rid of the suffering. You'll always feel uncomfortable in this world, as long as we have a, a body and a mind, you will feel uncomfortable, but we can be spiritually happy and blissful when we're serving Krishna or connected to him. That's what the Bhagavad Gita was teaching us. So that was my uh, three minute explanation of my journey. Is that okay? Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Perfectly happy. Yeah, we might be suffering or we're not perfectly happy. It's hard to understand these things when you're a kid. Because when you're a kid, you just want to play all the time and you're happy. So just play and be happy. That's all. You don't have to worry about all these things. About suffering and about temporary things in this world and that we're not always happy. When you become an adult, uh, if you come back here in about 20 or 30 years, you'll understand everything I'm talking about. Because then your life will be full of uh, <laughs> challenges. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll realize that it's not uh, always perfect in this material. When you're a kid, you don't have to worry about these things. Just be happy. Just play, have some Easter eggs, and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Is that okay? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, yeah apart from what you have described over yourself, you are also a widely read person. Like you take a lot of courses for very advanced devotees in the temple and things like that. Uh, how do we as practicing devotees, or how, one who wants to learn more about spiritual life, how to get that taste to read books, spiritual books, and how to uh, actually uh, you know, come to a certain state of knowing what yeah, so how do you get a taste for reading spiritual books? Yeah, yeah you have to read them. <laughs> that will help a lot. So start reading the spiritual books and then you'll get a taste for reading the spiritual books. If you don't read them, you're never going to get a taste for reading them. And then where will the knowledge come or where will the realizations come from? That will come when you begin to practice what's in the books. Because you can read it, but if you don't practice it, if you don't put it into practice, then it doesn't become meaningful. No, no. You have to practice it. Is it okay? Thanks. Any other questions? Is anyone in the room hungry? <laughs> One lady, very good. Okay, so we have a meal ready for you. <laughs> and for anyone else who would like to join us. So, thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to, after lunch, at about 3 o'clock, we can go and visit the cows. Yay. So if you'd like to visit the holy cows, the sacred cows, you can visit with us. 
So I think we're going to serve lunch today just outside to the right here. And then we also have a room up the end. So if you want to sit inside, if it's a bit cold for you, uh, the room is available up there, the heater's on. Or you can sit outside and then you can meet us at 3 o'clock. We'll go to the Gosh Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.